think that there's a bunch of teams that in a normal year would be like the seventh or eighth best team in America. There's a dozen of them, but I don't think that there's anyone in a normal season that you'd look at and say, okay, that's one of the best teams in college basketball. Am I right? Am I wrong? What do you think? I, I would argue to the contrary. That's what I was saying earlier, I'm pretty sure. But I would argue to the contrary uh, because there's just more talent in the field this year. That extra year of eligibility changes everything. I mean, look at some of the guys that are playing well this year. It's it's not just one team. It's not just two teams. Look how old Tennessee is. UConn's got old guys. Like Joey California, the dude's old. Like, And he's a, he's a crucial piece if they're going to win – Whenever they need to win ugly, they need somebody to spark them off the bench. He's a big guy, and he's an extra year guy. So there's a lot of players that are in that mix. I think it broadens um, the talent across the top of college basketball, and I think it's a good thing. I would almost argue to the contrary to where like these teams are such good teams that you had all this talent. Maybe in 2015, you've got three or four that are in the top five or six like because there's so much more in the pot this year. If that makes sense. So who would be both for both of you guys, who would be the top tier this year in college basketball? Cause I think that's a really interesting conversation. Yes. So I've got a top tier and it was hard to put together. Honestly, I don't think that there's a ton of separation here. And I do think any one of these teams could beat the other on a given day. I have eight teams, okay. eight teams in my top tier. Here we go. Houston. Who I want to say right now, I think in two or three weeks, everyone's going to be like, they're the best team in college basketball. They're number one. They're the best team, which they are number one in the AP poll. They're number one in my Fox Sports Weekly rankings. They play in the American, so it's going to be an easy take for people to make. Don't overreact. I think they're really, really, really good. But when you play in a conference like that, it skews our our thinking sometimes of you. Houston's one. Kansas is in tier one. They've more than proved themselves. Tennessee's in tier one. Mm-hmm. UConn stays in tier one. Absolutely, they do. Purdue gets respect from me because I actually thought Purdue just had their most impressive week of the season. They lost at home to Rutgers. I thought for sure they'd lose another game. I re- I would have picked them. I mean, I thought Ohio State would beat them. Purdue showed me something this week. So they mm-hmm. stay in tier one. Alabama, absolutely in tier one. And, yep. and the biggest surprise in tier one from what I thought at the start of the season Arizona and UCLA. Yep. I'm there with that. Yeah, that, that's that's tier one. I, I would be remiss not to throw a couple of others kind of in that. Well, I guess I would go tier two. I mean, it's still pretty big as well. I mean, there's just a lot of teams. I like that. Was it eight that you Is had? Is there someone I'm missing? Is there someone I'm missing? I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe Texas, but they've had so much going on. It's just so difficult for those kids. They're top 20 in both offense and defense. John, they've got their X's and O's guys still there, and Bob Donwald. Uh, Rodney Terry's done a fine job so far. Are, can they be at that part without their coach? Just don't know, right? So I think they would go down to tier two, but those eight, it's it's hard for me to find fault in any of those. Yeah, I, the only thing I would say is I'm not 100% convinced that Arizona should be at that level at, in this very moment. And we can get into why later on. That's a tease for one of our overreactions, but yeah. I'm a little bit concerned about them. Um, but beyond that, I, I think, I think you're exactly right. I, I just, my thing with Houston is I don't think we're really going to be able to know what they are. Like they, they basically play Memphis twice and that's it the rest of the year. Right. I don't yeah, think that exactly. there's anything else on their schedule that, that is going to, that kind of pops off. So um, I think it's kind of, they're in a little bit of that Gonzaga situation, right? where it's hard to really know what exactly they are. Um, Because if even if you look at some of the wins that they have so far this year, like their best win is probably St. Mary's at this point, right? It's either St. Mary's or at Virginia, depending on how you feel about either of those two teams. And I wouldn't put either of those two teams no. in the conversation for a contender for like even the Elite Eight, you know? No. St. Mary's um, St. Mary's is in the top 10 at Kimpong. Yeah, but in yeah, the yeah, – St. Mary's, in, like, their sneaky. computer numbers are really good, but like it's St. Mary's. Uh, they, they've what, – what have they done – to prove that they are that good, right? I get it. But they also lost to Washington. They lost at home to New Mexico. They lost to Colorado State. So, I, I yes, they, they look very good in the computer numbers, but, like, they have four losses. And yeah. three of those losses are to non-tournament teams. Yeah. Like, I, I just <laughs> – what, what are we doing? This right. is this is an example of why, like, sometimes Ken Palm can be a little bit flawed when you're um, when you're looking at things. Well, I Creighton's like, at number 17 at 9-7 and seven on Ken Palm. Like that's 
that that's also an issue. Yeah, that's, there's there's two yeah. sides of that. Um, yeah, well, there's a those there's a with Colt Brenner and without Colt Brenner Creighton team. Yeah, that one's pretty obvious. Yep. Yeah, I, I think I'm I think I'm with you there. I'm at kind of at the point where I would say the Kansas is the team that I'm most scared of in college basketball right now. I don't know if they're the best team. Uh, <laughs> How the waves I'm, change over the last yes. month for you? Well, yeah. they found a way to get KJ Adams going, man. Like we I, we said it last week. You don't we don't need to re- reiterate this, but when when you have that five man that can kind of space the floor and do what he does, and they've bought into this idea of fully going five out and just. I mean, there's a lot of ball screen actions. A lot. What, what do you call it? the zoom actions that they run? The, the Bill Self got really creative. Yeah, and he's done a really good job with it. And, and, and the and, only and loss and they KJ had Adams is still team. puts pressure on the rim, even though he's not posting up in a traditional manner. Like, mm-hmm. like he still got rim yeah. pressure there. And you have probably, dude. I'm telling. I'm, I'm. Dewan, man, like, got to be one of the best point guards in the country. And his stats don't stand out like crazy, but like Kansas has a point guard that you talk about point guard playing the tournament. He's going to make it happen. Like he's, he is so impressive. Plus, Here's he got all those question. guys. I think KJ Adams is just, he's such a lob threat and such a good athlete that he just, he rolls so fast. Like there's a, there's some guys that are rim, rim threats that roll and they're huge. Like Udoka Azabuki was huge. Like KJ Adams is just fast. Like he covers ground so quickly and he explodes so quickly that like it, it, he just adds a different element to that team. Here's my question. Okay. Would you rather be in Kansas's role, where when you turn the page to March, you've just gone through two plus months of seeing anything and everything, all levels of toughness, or would you rather be Houston, who maybe had a chance to kind of coast at times and might be better off for it and fresh? Honestly, I think I'd rather be in Houston's shoes. If if you if you know that you have the same quality of team, because I think the AAC is good enough where you're not necessarily going to fall into bad habits playing over and over against them. Like you still have to play well, whereas Gonzaga can kind of show up and, and, and win a lot of these games in normal years in yeah. WCC. Um, if you're, you're a coach, you definitely want Houston. Yeah. You're not going to be <laughs> as banged up. You're not, it's not going to be as physical. You know, you're not going to, I think you have less to worry about with like um, tired legs, maybe, maybe less sprained ankles or hamstring injuries or kind of muscle fatigue, things like that. So I think it's also less of a mental wear and tear thing i'd be worried about is people just kind of um fading in and out right like with, yeah. with kansas you know those guys are going to be locked in for the next yeah. three months and, whereas... and at kansas you're going to have experience in close games mm-hmm. and in tournament that's obviously a huge thing i i think to be contrarian like you want those tournament type atmospheres those tournament type last four minutes of the game situations yeah and now it is much harder over the course of the entire season i i understand that but i'm, I'm speaking strictly from a pre- preparation standpoint of the NCAA tournament pending that both teams stay healthy through the rest of the season. Right. I mean, obviously there's a lot of banging going on in big 12, but like, you know, at the same time, if you're able to stay healthy, I think I'd rather have Kansas's position, especially with the talent they have. I think that's a hell of a caveat, but if they're able to stay healthy, I, I would want Kansas's just because I'm more prepared for the tight games that happen in March. Yep. All right. Time to get into the overreactions. I got six minutes on the clock for each one of these. That's mostly to make sure that uh, that none of us ramble too much. Um, so we're going to start with this. 